She's best known as tough-talking prison guard Joan the Freak Ferguson. But it wasn't long ago actress Maggie Kirkpatrick was facing a jail sentence. She successfully fought to clear her name and now she's setting the record straight. Well, the bottom just fell out of my world. Accused of indecently touching a 14-year-old prisoner fan. What was it like having to go through a trial? It was my worst nightmare. The sensational conviction thrown out on appeal. All her life, she's been a fighter. She's had to be. But this blow has left her wounded. But then I guess that's the way things are. You know, they... Guilty until proven innocent. And taken the shine off a career that should be celebrated for all its successes. You can wear the filthy rag as often as you like. Yes, it was right and proper that I be exonerated, but it doesn't remove the stigma, it doesn't remove the scar, which I will probably carry for the rest of my life. Now, are you going to turn around and face me, or haven't you got the guts? Oh, I thought I'd let you hit me from behind. Over five decades, Maggie Kirkpatrick made her mark on Australian stage well, and screen. Welcome, new students. I am Madame Morrible. You look so fabulous and wicked. Well, that was a journey. That was a journey and a half. The same could be said about Maggie's life, a colourful tale of stunning highs and crashing lows. And what's it like looking back at all the things that you've done? Well, I'm probably more proud of my theatre work than any other. But what about Prisoner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd get there. It was just four and a half years out of, what, 55, 56 years. I didn't think very much of it at the time, but now I'm not allowed to forget it. Who could forget the corrupt lesbian prison warden with a thing for leather, Joan the Freak Ferguson? I never thought when I was planning on being a great Shakespearean actress that I would be a cult figure. But there you go. One more whisper out of you and you will be on a charge. She's loomed large, yeah, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah. And the fans who love her, they really love her, don't they? Love to hate they her. love to hate her, yes, <laughs> yes. Now nearing her 80s, Maggie is enjoying a sea change in northern New South Wales and revealing all in a new autobiography. The gloves are off. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a daunting title. <laughs> well, it's, it's apt, isn't it? From stunt. revelling in her own stunts... Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. ..to the low of a battle with the bottle and bankruptcy. You wrote about 1988, which was a shocking year. Yeah. What kind of challenges did you have to overcome at that time? Bad choices. Bad, bad choices um, of lifestyle. I mean, I've never been any good at choosing blokes. And I really hit rock bottom. And what about alcohol at that time? Yeah, that too much. In, in fact, quite often too much. But, you know, that's, that's my demon to deal with. She survived it all while working and raising a child, only to be dealt her hardest blow late in life when she found herself on the wrong side of the law. Hmm, yes, well, the, the elephant in the room. It would be the fight of her life, the fight for her freedom. Maggie, you described the allegations as malicious and untrue. Do you stand by those? Excuse me. So it was just a complete shock? Oh, yes, driving along the highway at 100k. To be confronted with such a phone call and such an accusation... From the, a police officer? Yes, yeah. yes, just... Well, the bottom just fell out of my world. It was New Year's Eve 2013 when Maggie learned she was facing allegations of sexual assault dating back to 1985. Did you expect it to go all the way through the system? No, no I didn't. I, I complied with what was asked of me um, and expected that to be the end of it. Maggie says she invited the 14-year-old girl, a fan who she first visited at a psychiatric facility, to her home for a meal and for respite. It would never be allowed now um, for a person of some profile 
to visit a fan alone. Uh, that, uh, I mean, but I you never... were asked to go and visit? Yes, yes, I was asked to go and visit. Um, this person was in a facility at the time. And uh, I, I had, on many occasions, visited fans in Sydney. After realising the teen had got into alcohol from her dining room cabinet, Maggie ordered a taxi and sent her back to the facility. In what was to become one of her darkest days, Maggie was wrongfully convicted of sexual assault in August 2015, before she was cleared on appeal in December. I just simply want to thank my legal team, my beautiful family. What was it like having to go through a trial? It was my worst nightmare. That's all I can say. You never would have imagined that you would ever appear before a court. No. And w was it one of those nightmares where you expect it to be over at any minute, but it keeps mm. ongoing? Mm. It must have been a shock to and, me. And even when it was over, it kept going and going and going in my mind, um, to the point where I needed some help after, after the event. Maggie details her struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder in the book and is frank about the media storm that engulfed her at the time. Do you think that the freak, that persona, affected the coverage of, of what you went through with the trial? Did that oh, totally. Right. So you paid a bit of a price there? I, I believe so. I believe so. The trashy reports, it was constantly images of Joan Ferguson. Was Joan Ferguson there? You know, like not a great grandmother. No. Theatre actress. No. No. No respect at all. Um, but then I guess that's the way things are. You know, they guilty until proven innocent. Through it all, Maggie's support from her family never wavered. How important were they during that terrible oh. time? Immeasurably, immeasurably important. They were there and their love was unconditional. And they believed in you. That's right. Maggie returned to the TV screen in 2017 in the Australian comedy The Letdown after nine years out of work. And although she's happy to leave a certain character behind... I want you looking like some scum bikey. Keep moving. Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'll have you for insubordination. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> There's hope the final curtain is still to come. Oh, I'm waiting for the phone to ring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought that I'd be a very busy and active old lady. But I'm not. I'm a lazy old goat. <laughs> I just, I just gonna, I'm too lazy you to get just, out of my own way. You just wrote a book. Oh, oh yes, I suppose I did. Lazy people don't do that. We're the patients, not them. I'll give you a session tomorrow. Yeah. What's your mother doing? Would you regard yourself as a survivor, given some of the relationships you've had, some of the difficulties you've had? Well, obviously, I'm 78, so I've come this far. I don't know how much further we go, but, you know... We just keep on keeping on.